Hello friends, it's time to gather all the ingredients you need to do a Smalls pillow finish. So this is the inspiration pillow. This is the one that I did first. And now I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step and show you guys how we did it. So it's a stitched piece, rook rack trim, fabric backing stitched up. So let's review some of the pieces that we need. Of course, you need your finished cross stitch, pillow size. This could be big, small, doble, whatever you want. The concept of the finishing is still the same, but you need your stitched piece. You need your back fabric, whatever you're gonna use for the back fabric. For this one, I used an upcycled flannel t-shirt or a flannel shirt. This is actually fabric off a bolt that I had because I thought it matched, matched my Mount Vernon roof and of course, Miss Martha's dress perfectly so i grabbed this one off my fabric wall i grabbed some navy rickrack trim it's a little bolder than the blue but that's okay it plays nice i've got my fiber fill i've got my lizard lither Liz that's a tongue twister lizard litter which is just crushed walnut shells that you can buy it's kind of like bird amazon i will put a link down below I got mine delivered from Amazon, super great way. I keep it in a tub. I have a measuring cup dedicated for it and a funnel dedicated for it, just so with the goals of not making a huge mess when I do my pillow finishes. I need a Frixon heat erasable pen, something that is going to disappear that you're gonna to wanna to use. I've got my rotary cutter, my cutting ruler, my cutting mat is on my design table. Plus I have my Pelon interfacing of choice that I'm going to put on both the stitching and the fabric pieces. So the first step I'm going to want to do is cut the interfacing to size. So cutting to size is a personal preference on how much of a margin you want on your pillows. I like a tight pillow, although my fabric is beautiful I, because I, I'm an Ada stitcher, so it's already kind of, well, this was either a 14 or a 16 count. I don't remember what this is stitched on, but I wanted a tight pillow, so I usually, go for about a half inch margin between the end of the finish and the edge of the pillow as my finished stitch. So let's just get rough measures to take to measure our interfacing and then we'll take it over and we'll be exact a little bit later. So my finish piece, this is, I will put down below, um, but I just finished stitching it this summer and I'm excited, although I missed my 4th of July pillows, I'm excited to add it to my patriotic dough bowl that sits around year round. Um, so it's four and a half wide finished and five and a quarter approximately. So I'm gonna go ahead, four and a half, five and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and cut, like I said, I like to cut my interfacing generously. So give me a good six by eight, six by seven, something like that. Plenty big enough. Yep, that's gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board and this is fusible. Like I said, I will link this down below, which is my favorite interfacing that I use for this project. It's a Pellon lightweight. Um, it's just enough so that my stitches don't move as well as the fiber fill. And more importantly, the lizard litter doesn't come through those Ada holes. So I went, go ahead, I'm gonna iron this on the back of this stitching. I'm going to cut a piece, whoop, I'm going to cut a piece of this fabric that also fits just off the bolt. Take that over and I'm going to iron both those pieces. Okay, I'm back from the ironing board. I've got both the interfacings on the fabrics that I'm using. Plenty of room for later. So now we go on to the next step. The next step is kind of where the rick rack trim this is how you get the rick rack trim to be perfectly lined up sewn into the trim now of course if you don't want to sew it into the seam so it pops out you could sew it on top it's totally personal preference i kind of like the rick racky ripples that go around the pillows at least right now all my patriotic pillows match this and so i'm excited for this next one to add to that collection so like I mentioned, I like a half inch seam around the bottom or around the exterior of the perim 
of the pillow. So I'm going to take my Frixon heat erase pen. Don't be scared. It comes away with heat. And so I'm going to line up the edge of my ruler half inch line with the end of my stitching. So right now this is easy because it's just the bottom line of the Mount Vernon house. I'm going to go to go ahead and line up that half inch edge. I've got my half inch line. Check. It's one of those things where you check three times before you draw. I mean, it's not really because you can always go and heat it away and do it again. But now I've got my bottom line and I'm going to do the same thing all around three edges. I'm gonna go ahead and measure five and a half, five and a half, six and a quarter, six and a quarter. Fantastic. Yay, I have four 90 degree corners. Magic. And so, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm going to take my Rick Rack and sew it down. Let me take you over there. All right, friends, we're over at my Juki 2010 queue. I will link my sewing machine down below just in case you're in the market for a sewing machine. This is my workhorse. She is my ride or die sew machine. I sew zillion hours a day on her and she is crushing it. Um, straight stitch only. But the thing that I wanted to show you and why I've got it all open and stuff is because this is what's important during this Rick Rack sewing step. You know, I'm gonna just sew with a white. I've got my machine threaded with just a white cotton thread. That is my normal go-to. It's an RFL 40 weight. It is always in my machine. So, but what I want in the bobbin portion of my thread is a color. I do not want white because I'm going to use that as my road to sew later on in the pillow making. So take this extra step, change your bobbin. It doesn't matter what color floss it is. You just want it to be bright and easy to see on your fabric. Now, of course, if I had a bright fabric, if I had a purple or pink or something where white was going to stand out and have the contrast I needed, I wouldn't want to switch or I wouldn't need to switch. But because I have this muted, gorgeous picture, this plus red, I think this is, the white, I it's just not easy enough for me to see. And you'll see why it's ma it will matter later on. So anyway, this is half inch Rick Rack and I'm going to sew it on strip by strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna line it up and I'm going to sew straight down the center right here in between these little wavy squiggles. And my goal, you know, this is handmade. So it is just a goal is to have my stitch line that's going right down the middle, these wavy centers to go right down the middle here. I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna certainly try to start it right here in the middle on this point. And as I'm sewing, I'm going to try to stay lined, hold her taut and have her go straight across. I'm going to do this four different times. I don't stop and turn. I think it adds too much bulk here at the corner. It kind of gives you a funky turn. You gotta like, work the magic for it to work. So instead I do four separate pieces and you'll see what I'm talking about when I sew.
so you can see I've got all four sides of the Rec Rack sewn on the front of the pillow. And look at those, easy to see. Oh my gosh, I might not even need my glasses. Stitch lines that I'm gonna use later. But I'm gonna put this guy aside and prep. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep the back for pillow assembly. So remember, I'm, I have extra, an extra wide piece of backing fabric, an extra wide piece of interfacing, and this is why. There's a lot of different ways to close your pillow up, whether you wanna hand sew at the bottom or hand sew in the middle or where, where you want your opening to be. I like my opening, the part where I'm going to put the fiber fill and the lizard litter, I like that to be in the back of the pillow, not on the bottom, just so it doesn't give it that funky possible wave at the bottom. So I came up with this method a while ago when I was upcycling a flannel shirt and I wanted the plaids to match. So I cut one piece that was bigger and I'm gonna fold it in half, try to line up. This is a tiny little pattern, so it's hard to do. But if you're matching a flannel, this way your stripes always match, right? Okay, and so what you're gonna do is you're going to fold it in half, give or take. And I'm going to mark, I like to be about a two inch hole. And so I'm gonna give myself two purple lines about two inches apart no science to this. And I'm going to take my machine and add a two and a half to two inch two, a number two stitch length. I'm going to sew from here to this purple line and back stitch a couple times. Now I do about a quarter, actually three eighths of an inch. I give myself a little wider back a couple times, reinforce and come down to the purple line. Keep the needle in. I'm going to switch my stitch length to six. Stay at the same thing, come down to this next purple, keep my needle down, and go back to two and a half. And then I'm going to reinforce right here at the top of the purple, down to the bottom of the pillow. So you can see I've got two, stop, six, stop, two again. But reinforcing both at the um, bottom and top of those purple lines, and here's why. Now I'm going to open up this fabric. So I'm gonna make this one piece of fabric turn into two, and now it opens it up. I'm gonna take it over to my ironing board and just iron these seams open. And then we're going to get the pillow assembled and I'll show you how magical it is. All right, so now we're in the final steps of getting the two front and the back together. So you can see I brought this back, back, the back fabric back over. You kind of, that seam just kind of disappears, but I've got it all ironed up flat and ready to go. And then I've got my front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to center it, give or take. You just wanna try to make sure that, well, you know, if you want the bottom seam, you want, I want, always want my extra to be at the bottom. So I'm just gonna look at it. This is why it's easier to make it bigger because then you don't have to worry about it. And then I'm going to take my four pins and just pin it down in the four corners. Try to avoid your stitching. Just, you know, you don't want anything to get all loosey-goosey. You don't want anything to happen, but it's okay. So now I've got this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those stitch lines and sew the pillow together. I'm gonna sew another seam at my two stitch length and go right on top of those blue lines, all around four sides. So now I've got it all sewn up. I'm gonna take my pins out, take it over to the cutting board table. 
and trim it up. All right, so now we're in my final trim phases. I like to do a little bit wider than a quarter inch all around right on the edge of that blue stitch line. It just gives you a nice tight seam so then you don't have to worry about accidentally cutting your seams too close. And then what you're gonna wanna do is, again, paying close attention not to cut your seams too close, but you wanna cut away that bulk that is in the corners. So not only do you wanna do, you know, just cut the points off, again, not too tight, but you wanna cut the points off as well as go ahead and angle in a little bit. Again, just trying to reduce the bulk at the, at the corners so that when you get a nice tight turn, you don't have a bulky corner that'll give you an extra rounded edge. If you don't mind that, that's okay. I don't like mine as to be a strong point, but I also don't like an ex accentuated curve. So now we're going to utilize that number stitch length that we sewn. Remember, it's right here. Let's find it. Those purple lines. So that is obviously not a Frixon pen because it's on the inside. It didn't disappear when I ironed. And that's why I used one of those felt tip markers. But what I'm gonna do is I can just, that's just an easy, super take my uh, seam ripper. And because I reinforced at the top and the bottom, I'm just popping like 10 stitches, maybe. And then once you get up to where the reinforcement is, it won't open anymore. So that's, that's about it right at my purple lines, perfect. And now I'm gonna do is turn my pillow inside out. As you're turning it inside out, you can use your Rick Rack to kind of like pull those corners out. They'll help you. You can also take a point turner and push it out. Just be gentle with it. You don't want to accidentally poke through, but I use a nice, thick, heavy point turner from my paper crafting days. And so it works out perfect. Gives you a nice point. And then, all right, it's coming together. Turn my Rick Racks, my little wavy Rick Racks inside out. I'm gonna take it over to the ironing board, give it one final press before we stuff her up. All right, so I've got my one final press done and now she's ready to become a pillow. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my fiber fill and fill those corners. I want to stuff and have nice tight corners and fiber fill I feel like is the way to do it. Um, you know, the lizard liver, the lizards give it the weight that I want to be a dough bowl pillow. You could just do fiber fill completely if you didn't wanna have any weight to it. It's no big deal, it's totally personal preference. What works for you, the first thing I like to do is fill my corners with some fiber fill. And then what I'm gonna do is add the lizard litter. I use my little funnel, fill it up, and slowly try to get it in the corners more towards the bottom. Obviously this is a weight. I want it to be weighted at the bottom. The top is kind of where it can be fluffier. So it's a, it's a little delicate matter of filling it up and you can fill it in the top and then kind of shove it down in there. And you keep doing that lizard and stuff, lizard and stuff until you get the consistency and the weight that you like.
So now I've got the pillow all stuffed the way I like it. It's got lizard litter in the bottom third, fiber fill up here, so it's gonna stand up nice and pretty in my dough bowl. So I've got that little seam, and because I gave myself a hefty edge, I'm just going to ladder stitch this shut real quick. Okay, friends, and she's done. Look at the cute little pillow. So, and then I've got the homespun. I did the hand stitching at the back. I added my label and then a cute little 2022 tag and a little homespun fabric. It covers up most of the stitching seam, but otherwise it just vanishes back there. You can get your own little printed labels. I will link an Etsy shop down below that I use for my personal ones, but I went ahead and threw a Tiger Lily shop on here and a 2022 pin. But I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and you can get some pillow finishes in your doll bowl soon. Happy stitching, friends!